Welcome back to the old Iron Lever channel. My name is Bob. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some lighting for the uh, Bridgeport Mill. This is my Bridgeport Mill. The light I've used typically has been this uh, arm light here. It doesn't provide a lot of light, especially on the far side of it. But it also gets in the way. I've had videos where I shot nothing but the back of this instead of the tooling I was looking at. So I uh, looked around. I was going to make a ring light for my spindle and uh, decided that I'll look around and see what somebody else made first. And I found this one um, is on Tormach's site. And it's uh, just a generic drill press uh, light. But they mentioned that it fits the, some of their spindles, and they also mentioned it fits a Bridgeport spindle and any other spindles of certain sizes. So it was $32, so I went ahead and ordered it. And uh, it, it, I think, works very nicely. And uh, I did anticipate a problem when I bought it, that my spindle, like Bridgeports do, retracts almost entirely into the housing. There's not much of it sticking out. So there's really nothing to clamp it to. And so I went ahead and clamped it to the spindle. It fits fine. But when you go up all the way, it's old habits die hard. You can't make yourself stop short uh, reliably. Um, so I'm always peeling this thing off and it, it lands on the, on the table and creates some language and things. Ah. That's the problem we're going to fix, is I can't back that out too far. Oh, no. God darn dag it. Anyway, um, I built this little uh, collar that clamps onto the, the threaded uh, uh, rod for the, uh, the quill stop, and I made it so it's threaded inside and I can loosen these screws and adjust it. Well, it turns out it doesn't really need any adjustment. Uh, it stops perfectly right where it is. So uh, I'll go around the other side. I may take a handheld here to go look at it. There's a little closer view of the thing. Um, like I say, we've got good lighting down here. And uh, it comes with a coily cord that kind of follows the, the quill up and down. And at the end of the coily cord, there's a little magnetically mounted switch that uh, works very well. And from there is a little thin cord that goes over to wall wart over there on the wall. Um, the magnet is quite strong. It actually does a nice job. I, I know from experience that you can dangle this thing from it because I've knocked it off several times while I was making the collar. So. Um, Kind of a nice tip. I, I recommend if you uh, want to get some better lighting on your quill, uh, take a look at these. Uh, it's, there's a more expensive options that uh, I don't know they're much better. And there was some uh, projects out there for do-it-yourself things, but I found that the parts were kind of expensive on some of them. And on some of them, the parts were no longer available. So. Uh, for 32 bucks, I figured I wasn't really risking a whole lot messing around with this. So, um, stays on well, doesn't fall off unless you knock it off. Uh, I'm happy. Now we're going to show the uh, spacing nut that we're going to build for it. So we got a piece of an uh, inch and a half round stock here, and we're going to uh, um, drill it for. 2964, so I think it is for a half inch 20 thread. So we're going to drill and tap it and then uh, part it off. Then we're going to saw it. We'll probably actually drill, uh, drill and counter bore some uh, screw holes here to hold two halves together, and then we'll split it um, so that when we put it on the, the threaded rod there on, on the uh, quill stop, that it'll thread up and down, but we can also tighten up the screws and lock it in place. So, Anyway, um, start out by getting out our, uh, our center drill and
Yeah, going for about a half inch thick. Okay, we're drilling it all the way through with a number 32 drill. It's the tap size for a tap drill for a 632 thread. Just made it. We slit the first one, the first half of the, the uh, ring, by uh, traversing on the y-axis and just uh, incrementally in uh, increasing the x-axis to take a little slices at a time. It didn't work very well, 
Um, so this time we're uh, plunging straight in with the x-axis and uh, that's working a lot better. Uh, the mill is set on its slowest pulley speed and the VFD is turned down to about 25 hertz. We uh, got the Noga Mini Cool working uh, to cool the, the uh, slitting saw down. Off camera I uh, drilled the clearance holes for the screws and uh, counterbored the first hole. Uh, now we're lining up using the clearance drill uh, on the second hole just to make sure everything is, uh, is perfectly aligned or as good as we can get and then we will uh, counterbore it. And here we have the counter border going to work. Just eyeballing the depth. So now we're just finishing up the installation of the spacer on the uh, quill stop rod. Uh, get putting the last screw in, tightening it up. Uh, it threads itself up and down the uh, rod perfectly, and uh, the two screws on the that clamp the split together uh, lock it securely into place. So it uh, it's exactly what I wanted to happen. Well, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you liked it, and if you uh, did, please give me a thumbs up, or if you see, uh, think of a comment you would like to make that you think I'd like to hear, well, add the comment. And uh, certainly welcome to subscribe. I, I always like to have more subscribers. Uh, Till uh, the next video, happy trails.